Okay, this is a, a video about a, a funny um, Christian website that actually cites satire on Christians. And it's called the Babylon Bee. Link to it will be in the video description. I've been looking for something like this for a long time. There was a really big, funny Christian website um, years ago that had all kinds of jokes about you know, satirizing Christianity and sometimes Judaism. And um, you got to, people contributed to it, but it's gone now and I can't remember its name. This is the funniest thing I've found since that time, which was like 20 years ago. Okay, so they have these articles, see, like, Worship Band Mystically Appears on Stage at Conclusion of Pastor's Sermon. Okay. Devastated Stephen Curry discovers the context of Philippians 4.13, <laughs> which is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> Why would you be devastated about that? This, this is really funny stuff. Congregation questions pastor's lavish life, lifestyle on the purchase of a 1998 Toyota Corolla. Church cleans out the fridge. I mean, this it's this kind of stuff, okay? If only you love Jesus as much as you love baseball. Okay. But the article I want to highlight, and unfortunately the website is completely badly designed. I hate these overlays that they put on there. So that when you do this, okay, I, I hate it when they do that. So you just have to live with it. So this, this article is, Dispensationalists frantically adjust end times charts to include Brexit votes. Okay, now, it is true that there is dispensationalism right here. See, that's Luke 21, which we've been doing, I've been doing videos on now for about a month. Um, and this is actual prophecy about the end times. Luke is playing on this guy, Matthew 24, 25, which is the Lord's own prophecy. Luke's perspective, and I'm just getting ready to, to put up uh, comment 9 now, Luke's perspective, oops, so I can do it this way, Luke's perspective is covering some kind of different benchmarking down here, okay, and he's writing 28 years after Christ died, which Hagee doesn't know anything about, and he's writing 35 years to the millennium, which Hagee doesn't know anything about. So I personally find this kind of article, dispensationalist adjust end times to the Brexit vote, and then you show it's showing a doctored photo of Hagee teaching with his goofball timeline, which is completely wrong because he doesn't even know this stuff about the meter in the Bible. He doesn't know this. What I'm showing in this meter in the Bible, it's all right there in the text. He's not he's not at all aware of this. Okay, not at all. And this is where the actual prophecy is, and it's an annual prophecy all the way to 3250 A.D. If the rapture doesn't happen, hi Christian, you're still alive on this earth. Here's what that history is going to be like. And see, here we are now. Per Matthew, the Lord sat, it's a satire against church. It's really blistering, okay. See, there's the, the English Reformation, it's 1570 A.D. You always have to add 30 in the numbers because Christ is talking in 30 A.D. And by the time you get down here, see right here, Kyrie, that's 2016. Now, our now. So the whole characteristic, the satirical characteristic of our time is the remaining virgins as they're leaving, Christ comes. Christ comes to you through learning scripture, so they're not learning scripture. Okay, that's the satire. Alright, so just so that you know, satire on Christianity is biblical. It's in the Bible, you're looking at it. It takes a while to understand what the satire means, because good satire is not um, in your face. Good satire is subtle. Alright, and then Luke tacks on to... Christ's own meter, okay, starting in his verse 5, he starts tacking on to Christ's meter, at, Christ at 24.1, Matthew 24.1. So 
I just want you to see, because I know a lot of this is going over your head, that that satire is actually part of the Bible, and you're looking at it. Understanding it is something that's ongoing, that takes time. This guy up here, hey, he, he doesn't know anything. I'm sorry, he doesn't. And I started doing the 490 thing about a year or two or maybe the same year as he came up with his fakakta nonsense claiming that the 490 is based on the formation of Israel as a state. No, it's not. It starts from Adam. The 490 starts from Adam when he fell. And I, I've been doing research on that and publishing it, you know, in videos and in Word docs that are in the video descriptions since, um, what? Well, the video started in 2008. I've been publishing it since uh, 2004. I started writing web pages in the year 2000. So, you know, God gave Hagee time to fix his math and to fix the fact that he's not basing what he's saying on Scripture. He's basing it on a cockamamie idea about 1948 when Israel became a nation, uh, legally. It has nothing to do with it at all. So, this is really funny. Look, updated. <laughs> Somebody did a Photoshop on this, okay? See, they did a Photoshop. Updated. Timeline of the second coming and end of world chronology. And then they stuck, they doctored the photo. They had Brexit here. And then they had to cancel all, almost all of what they wrote before because they're fixing it for the Brexit vote. Now, why is that funny? Do you see this? Is why I have to explain this? Okay, it's funny because um, dispensational theology assumes assumes that there is a ten nation European confederacy required for the end times to occur. Okay, Brexit would mean that Britain is getting out of the ten nations. Okay, it's not actually ten even in the EU, but if Britain leaves, oh my God, then all of our prophecies are wrong. No, you didn't read it right in the first place, dummy, but that's beside the point. But that's what makes this article so funny. So here we go. I'm going to read it. Or I could hire the, the lady to read it. Maybe I'll do that. Let me hire the lady to read it. Okay. Now, here's how I do this. It's called text to voice in Firefox. That's how you can get it as an add-in so I'll let the I'll let the British lady read it okay and here's how you do that you paint the text like this and then you right click and, and once you've installed text to voice you just say speak it
within a few months, can't you submit title for you perceived dispensations of <laughs> You see how good this is now? Let me, I mean, if you have to explain the joke, it's not funny, but I got to do this. Okay. The whole point about this thing is that Hagee, like all the other pastors, and actually my own included, um, we're going along with this conventional idea that, oh, it must be a politically revived Roman Empire, and therefore the European Union might be it. Now, before my pastor died, he came to distrust that interpretation. But he taught it for years prior to his later distrust. This is the, the theological humor behind Brexit. Okay? Well, if Brexit leaves, oh, then all of our prophecies are wrong. Compounding the error. Compounding the error. Stupid Hagee. And I'm sorry, you're supposed to be nice about pastors, but you're not supposed to be nice when they lie. Okay? And the worst kind of lie is a lie you don't even know you're lying. He comes up with this stupid thing called the blood moon. And he comes up with this stupid idea that the 490s, that was back in 2005, 2006 for him. I got it in 2004. He comes up with this cockamamie idea that you have to date the 490s backward from when Ezra became a political entity. No. You know, 490s in Daniel, that's the only place where you see it in English. It's all over the Bible, but you can't see it in English. Okay? So, he's got to revise his whole timeline because he's using wrong stuff in the first place. Okay? And it is true. That's what makes this article so funny. Now, Tim LaHaye was the guy who um, helped write that piece of trash called Left Behind that was made in the movies. You should just leave the, the book and the movie behind in the trash. Okay, what resemblance it has to Bible is really quite, like, only one thing, the name Rapture. And it does kick off the tribulation. But what the Rapture is and how it's going to occur, like, he in his little write-up doesn't even know. And he's coming up with all these cockamamie ideas where how come you get those, how can you get those from the Bible? You can't. Okay, so he hastily altered his precise wall charts. See, because he bought into the Blood Moon Hagee garbage, too. Okay, now watch. We had previously thought that Saddam Hussein would be the one to usher in a one-world government. But that's looking less likely now. Yes, yeah, Saddam Hussein has been dead for years. And why are they saying Saddam Hussein here? What's so funny about that? Because one of the versions of this so-called prophecy, a misunderstanding about how the Bible, you know, words it, is the idea that, you know, Babylon, all right, is going to resurge and Iraq basically occupies the space of Babylon, okay? They don't understand what Babylon is, okay? So they misuse it in prophecy. The Bible well defines Babylon in Revelation and prior, but they don't get it. So they're thinking, oh, it must be the territory of Iraq. Therefore, Saddam Hussein would usher in one world government. Now, the one world government is the idea of the revived Roman Empire that is based on Daniel 9.27 and Daniel 11.35 and following. Because they're thinking, oh, the, the actual physical Europe that was there when the prophecy was given, the physical Roman Empire would be revived. Because the guy that's going to take over the final, the final Antichrist from the Gentile side, because there are two of them, um, is, is, you know, made fun of as being from part of Babylon, the harlot, Revelation 17. And the seven hills refers to Rome. It really does. But even geographically, there were two Romes. And the, and the pastors aren't taking that into account. There were two of them. With seven hills exactly. Seven Hills is what the people of the original Rome called themselves. Okay? So the seven hills, but there were seven hills that were made deliberately by Constantine when he moved to New Rome, which we call Byzantium, now called Istanbul. When he did all that in the 320s, you know, 330 AD is, I think, when he finished its construction, he literally built seven new hills there. Okay, but maybe it's not seven actual hills. Maybe it's the idea of the Roman Empire. 
and it might very well will well be church because mystery is Paul's word for church and mystery is the used word for in Revelation 17. Okay, well, that's looking less likely now. Yeah, because Hussein is dead. So we're going to make some official adjustments. Yeah, I love this. But he added that the European Union might not be ushering in an age of one world government after all. Duh! See, because it, it Britain's gone from the EU. See, they're assuming that the Antichrist is the EU. It's not necessarily the EU. That's why this is so funny. See, when you have to explain a joke, it's not funny anymore. Okay. Meanwhile, a California prophecy expert, Dr. David Meyer of Shadow Mountain. Seven Hills Mountain. Seven Mountains is a sect of Christianity that thinks it, it has to become the Revelation 17 harlot to bring Christ back. Boy, talk about reversing scripture. Reportedly made an emergency early phone call, Texas Pastor John Hagee. John, have you seen the news? This isn't in any of the tables. Oh, Brexit. Brexit's going to ruin all of our prophecy because we base our prophecy on the EU, even though the Bible never said that in the first place. After calming Jeremiah down, Hagee reportedly consulted a series of lunar charts taped across his bedroom walls. Because Hagee's now talking about blood moons. That's not, the prophecy's right here per year, honey. How come you don't know that, Hagee? It's right here. Okay? How come you don't know that? Can't you read the Greek? Guess not. Alright? Because it's right here. All you have to do is count the syllables and it tells you what year it is. Like, look, 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 look. By the way, back. Okay? This is 16 years after 30 AD. And you know that because the dateline for the book is 49. And 49 years prior to when Christ talked was when that temple from which he's talking about, when the temple was started to be rebuilt by Herod. And at that time when he talks, there are 63 years left to the millennium. Which is what you're supposed, you're famous for prophesying with your stupid lunar charts. But Christ said you can't predict the day or hour, which is what this whole real prophecy about time, going to 3250 AD, what it says. It's reinforcing the idea you can't predict when the rapture is going to happen. That's the whole point of it. If the rapture doesn't happen and you're still alive, what's the time going to look like? That's the purpose of prophecy, to give that to you. <gasps> Oh, how come, how come Hagee's using lunar charts? And I like this. They, you know, they're making this up. Taped across his bedroom walls and get this. And surmise that the Brexit decision had actually been accurately predicted by Haley's Comet in 1986. Before proceeding to scribble some corrections on his favorite eschological timeline in red marker. See? And that's supposedly his scribbles. Brexit going there. And then he has to block out, red out all this stuff because it's all wrong. See, that's what's so funny about this article. Okay. Meanwhile, in California, we just finished that. We totally missed it, Hagee hey, told reporters. Yeah, you did and you're still missing it. Because you don't know about the 490s in Bible that start with Adam and anybody else can figure them out simply by counting the begats. There's 409 years between the birth of Seth and the birth of Enoch. Or not, was it Enoch? I think it was Enoch. It's in my, it's in my, it's in here. You want to get all that stuff about the real 490s and how they work, you just go to... How God orchestrates time. And all the math is there. And then the other channels I just showed you, they all go through the Bible verses. See? This is why there's a 490 and this is the channel. See? And here's a worksheet that I did showing how the 490s fit in history. I did that in 2000, starting in 2004. And then here's its basic structure. 490, 70, and 490. That equals 1050. And then that was... You know, two of them, 
it would be Gentiles, Abraham to, to Adam to Abram. And the Jews know this. It's in Sanhedrin 97, 99. They call it 2,000 instead of 2,100. Okay, 2,000 years for the Goyim, 2,000 years for the Jews, and then Messiah comes. Yeah, he does. See, here's the end of the second 2,100. And Messiah comes then. Okay, and this is the 2,100 we're in. It hasn't finished yet. See, it's all in the Bible. But hey, he doesn't know it. Okay. We totally missed it. Yeah, you did, and you're still missing it, Hagee. You're teaching false doctrine and making money, and that's why they're joking about him here. Hagee further stated he would have an exhaustive new book for which you pay money and he gets rich, covering his still getting it wrong. Brexit, dispensational too. <laughs> now, Hagee isn't necessarily writing a new book, all right? I mean, because this is like the onion, okay, it's a satire. But what they're satirizing is that Hagee was wrong. Yeah, and he's still wrong. No matter how he does it, he's wrong. Because until he knows this, the structure of the 490s in Bible, and here's a whole worksheet that goes from Adam to, um, I want to say it's like, 2630 A.D. I'm going to have to lengthen it now in light of the timeline here in Matthew, which goes to 3250. Hey, you don't know this. Okay, so honey, you're going to have to go way back to the drawing board and redo everything because you know what? You think Britain is supposed to be part of a 10-nation European Confederacy and is electing to exit. Now, will it really exit? No. Probably a rejoin. And then they'll say, oh, see, we were right. It's European Confederacy. But they're not right. That's why this article is so funny. It's probably not funny now because I spent so much time explaining it. You're never supposed to explain a joke. But I hope this helps. LoveBabylonB.com